good morning. We're getting close to Christmas and we were a little bit wondered, wondering what we could do for Christmas, where we would be. We had no idea, of course. And yesterday we found this amazing campsite with just a beautiful view. And uh, I'll just show it to you. Check that out. And we think this might just be the perfect spot to celebrate our Christmas Eve. But we have found an even better idea for tonight. This morning, I saw a couple of vans parked on that island over there. And I think that is just a brilliant idea to go over there. Maybe you can see it. But that hill over there. That's where we're going. After spending the morning looking around the town of truth or consequences and buying everything that we need for our Christmas dinner, we return to claim our spot on Rattlesnake Island. We pick the best spot we could manage. And of course, as we always try, it's right next to the water. This is the first time either of us are having a Christmas on the road. And for both of us, we are feeling perhaps a bit sad that we won't see our family, but we have each other. And this, is an incredible experience. This is our setup for tonight. We got everything ready for a campfire. This is the spot where we will be sleeping and we're gonna have our Christmas Eve dinner. I'm gonna start prepping right away and uh, this is just gonna be absolutely awesome. Lindsay took the reins on this one and has quite the spread in mind for our dinner. It was quite the feast. For Christmas, we ate guacamole, mackerel with peaches, crab and tomatoes with a sauce, some crackers, kettle cooked chips, olives, and some pomegranate sodas to wash it all down with. It was a lovely but a unique Christmas, and I couldn't ask for anyone better to spend it with. Nothing to do now but listen to the waves and make a plan for tomorrow. It's Christmas Day and we're driving west out of New Mexico. The land is still finding ways to amaze us. The Gila National Forest arises from the ground before our eyes and grants us another amazing drive. We are blasted to almost 2,500 meters in this high altitude route that has, to this day, left an impactful memory on both of us. The winding roads and switchbacks carry on for over an hour as we eagerly await the summit at the top of this amazing mountain pass. Finally, we reach the top of Emery Pass and we take a break to just absorb how awesome this planet is and how lucky we are to be here. Just about out of New Mexico, but the same routine appears before us as we look for our spot for the night. And again, it's by the water. just us and the water chickens. Us and the water chickens <laughs> at our new spot in New Mexico. Uh, we're having a really good time here. Uh, yeah. The landscape for me is uh, phenomenal. It keeps changing from snowy mountains to wide open plains to crazy rocks to white sands. To... Really loving this place. <laughs> yeah. And also we find the most awesome campsites here. And it's all for free, so that's great. Yeah, this is such a nice place. Tomorrow, we are in Arizona, and we can't wait to see what is in store for us.
We're in the Arizona backcountry, and we can really tell it's winter. It's cold. We're well above 4,000 meters, and the snow is plentiful. As a Canadian, I'm used to driving in the snow, so I know what I'm doing. Plus, we have the benefit of having aggressive tires and four-wheel drive. A couple more hours of this, and we'll be in much lower elevation on our way to Phoenix. We had this beautiful spot last night, just in the Arizona wilderness. Had, had a visit of coyotes last night as well. It was absolutely beautiful. But it started raining and it rained all night. And now we are a little bit in trouble. Just having mud, sticky mud everywhere. And let's just hope that our truck is ready for this and that we are ready for this because we have about, I think, two, three kilometers of drive to do in these dirt roads, which was fine yesterday, but today it might be a little bit more challenging. Challenging and stressful. That's the theme for today's events. The ability of myself and the truck will be put to the test today. I'm used to off-roading, but I'm not used to it with our house on the back and in the Arizona mud. This is going to be a challenge. We're going sideways. We're going slow. We gotta crawl. Even with four-wheel drive engaged, I start to question myself. This might not be a good idea. What are we gonna do? I don't know. Because it's only gonna rain more. Max tracks, maybe? No. <laughs> Do I want to know? Um, the road is just clay. Uh, the tires aren't getting any grip. Well, we have to get out of here. Slowly does it. We have to. This is why we have no grip and slipping down the road. We gave it another try to get through that thick mud and um, it worked thanks to this amazing driver. No, here. we're not out of the mud yet though. We're not there yet. I think it's about another two kilometers. So it's a 3.5 kilometer drive in total. Um, but it looks like we're out of the thickest mud, hopefully. Uh, problem is we really need to get out of here because it's going to be raining for five, six days straight. So we really have to get out of here. So we're going slowly. It's going well so far, but I see that there is there's another dip coming up. So uh, fingers crossed that we can make it out of here safely. The car that went in front of us that did the same route, he got pulled into the left. You can see oh, yeah, where his can tire see tracks. tracks. Okay. Or maybe he maybe had, he did it on purpose. Maybe he did it on purpose. I hope so, but there is some ruts in the ground that the truck was trying to follow. Yeah, it's all rutted. Maybe we should go and check it out by foot first. It's already starting to pull the truck to the to the side. What if we go over more to the left, out of his tracks? No, because the whole road angles to the left. Yeah, it angles into a ditch. We start going sideways immediately, so we stop to reassess. We seem to be constantly getting ourselves in messes like this, so don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on all of the action. Let's back up and try to pick a different line, but every time I try and move forward, the rut pulls us in the direction it wants.
perseverance and determination. Those are the two things we need right now. Finally on our own line, away from the other tracks, I drive down as slow as I can, with Lindsay ready to deploy the traction boards the moment I sense slipping. Our final effort to get out of this Arizona rainstorm. Finally at the bottom, we make it out. At least we made it nice and straight. Somebody else slide it off on the left. Whew. Dirty everywhere though. But we are back on track. Not there yet. But we're getting closer. Ooh, out of breath. So we're here in the desert of Phoenix and we're doing a mod to our truck. We are finally adding a spare can holder onto it. Uh, we've come into a few situations where we've needed um, some extra fuel and we're no longer going to be having that worry with an extra 20 liter jerry. That's really tight. Okay. And with this big red beauty, I Ooh. now anoint this truck no longer scared of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da. It doesn't fit. You gotta be kidding me. This has to go the other way. Oh. <laughs> giving me a scare there. It doesn't fit. You're gonna have to be really careful with that lamp. So putting on that uh, jerry can wasn't the only thing we did. We spent two days here in Phoenix, in the Phoenix area. Um, first thing we did, we actually got the mount for that jerry can. Um, and today we ended up getting some new keys for the camper because for some reason our keys stopped working. Yeah. So we had a spare one that did work, copied that. Um, we also had to get brand new um, what are they, propane tanks because our camper is 10 years old and the propane tanks needed to be replaced yeah. this year. So we had to do that as well. <laughs> we did a lot, uh, a lot of running around, but it was worth it getting the vehicle ready. Things got to happen, you know. Happy to be in a dry spot for the night and also out of the city in which we spent two days running around spending money. We get word of a van life event from a friend that we met in Big Bend National Park. It's on our way west. Let's go check it out. We are in Quartzsite, Arizona, near the California border. And apparently this is a hot area for travelers, as we see some sort of travel vehicle occupying just about every space for miles around the city. We pull in late in the afternoon. Apparently we could have come earlier. New Year's Eve celebration is about to go down. Um, we are at a van life community, so that's going to be so much fun. We are kind of a little bit the strange duck in the, in the pond, but other than that, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to make a fire, we're going to have music, we're going to have lights. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Over 20 like-minded souls ended up at this party. Not one of us knowing the others, but all getting along like old friends that haven't seen each other in years. We enjoy adult beverages around a blazing campfire until it was time to count down. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! 
not gonna work. Here, hold it. I gotta light mine still. As we spend our first moments of the new year with this no longer random group of people, we share champagne in our cups. And in the sky, apparently. We laughed, shared stories, and talked about our travel plans with our newfound friends until the early morning. Don't forget to come back next week in our final two weeks in the US we traveled to Joshua Tree National Park and Death Valley.